In today's episode of Tristan Take Video, I'm reviewing the Luen Hyper 50D wheel set. A 50 millimeter deep carbon wheel set that looks pretty futuristic, is actually pretty affordable and surprisingly fast for the money. In this episode, I'm gonna talk about where the wheels are from, why I'm riding them, who I think they're for, and just as equally, who I don't think they're for. So as you can see, I've got the wheels mounted on my bike behind me here. And like every episode, I'm gonna get out for a quick spin, and then I'm gonna come back and review these wheels. This is my honest thoughts on the Luen Hyper 50D. Let's do it. Alrighty, so welcome to today's episode of Tristan Take Video. If you guys have been following me for a little while now, you'll know that I don't do many product reviews. Having said that, when Luen reached out to me, I was particularly intrigued by this wheel set. The reason for that was, was because I have actually seen quite a few reviews of people saying very good things about this wheel set. And I wanted to see if the claims that the other YouTubers were making and also the claims that the company were making add up. Now, a quick disclaimer before I go any further, Luen did send me the wheels for free. I didn't open my wallet and pay for these wheels, but that's part of their marketing. They're doing a huge push on YouTube, which is why you'll see so many Luen Hyper 50 wheel set reviews on YouTube at the moment. I'm hoping mine can be a little bit different. But having said that, when they did contact me, they did say I could say anything I wanted about them. And if the wheels are shit, I'm gonna say so. Luen don't get to see this video before I put it up online. So everything you're seeing is original content. You guys are the first people to see it. They're gonna be watching at the same time. I hope you guys all enjoy and uh, Luen, I'm not gonna go too hard on you. But if you do enjoy this video, I'm always interested in reviewing the other depths of wheels that you guys have. So anyway, that's enough rambling. Let us get into it. Okay, so first things first, who are Luen? Where are they from? What are they doing as a company? And why was I interested in them? Luen are a Chinese carbon manufacturing company based out of Xiaomin. Now Xiaomin in China is the center of China's carbon manufacture industry. The region is known for basically producing a whole bunch of the bike industry's carbon products. And Xiaomin itself is known for producing products. For brands like Specialized, Roval, Cadex, and Luen's parent company, Winspace, is actually a carbon manufacturer that does OEM products for a whole bunch of Western brands. But in 2019, Winspace thought, you know what, why don't we start manufacturing our own products and selling them under our own label? And that's where they started with the Winspace frames and also with the Luen wheels. The wheels I'm reviewing today are the Luen Hyper 50D. This wheel set was manufactured for the first time in 2019, came out in 2020, and they have actually since been upgraded. The wheels that I am riding, the 2020 versions, have been hugely popular. Luen tells me they've sold 50,000 wheels. They claim that their wheels have been ridden at the Olympic Games, which I haven't actually had a very close look at who was riding them in the Olympics. If they've been ridden at the Olympic Games, that's incredible. And if they've been ridden at a continental level, like the team is saying, that is also an incredible level. These wheels are direct to consumer, so you can buy them straight off the website and get them sent straight to your house. But having said that, Luen now have about 200 brick and mortar shops all around the world where you can buy Luen wheels. Now, Luen do claim that they're looking to make affordable wheels, not cheap wheels. Part of the reason and part of their drive and philosophy behind that is they want everyone to have access to really fast products for their bike and not feel that anyone will ever lose a KOM, a race, or get a PR again because they couldn't afford to buy slightly faster products for their bike. Now that is their philosophy. I'm reading that off a website. That is not my own words, but I think it's a nice philosophy to have. It's cool to democratize cycling and allow everyone to ride as fast as they possibly can because everyone wants to go faster on their bike. So yeah, big ups to uh, Luen for doing that. Anyway, that's enough talking about the company. Let's get into what these wheels actually are. Alrighty, now like all good reviews of any product online, I'm gonna show you a video of the box first. Now these Luen Hyper Wheels come in a very nice black box with a cool little motivational tag in the lid there when you open it. It's nice to see a company with an affordable product put some decent thought into the packaging and when they send it to you, it's kind of cool to have a box rock up. It feels like you're buying a premium product. This wheel set retails for 1300 US dollars, about 1250 euros, about 1900 Australian or Canadian dollars. So slightly 
slightly more affordable than a very high end tier luxury wheel set from a brand like Envy or DT Swiss. These wheels are slightly more affordable, probably about 40 to 50% of the price of one of those other mainstream manufacturers, which is pretty cool. That's a very affordable price for a wheel set this good looking. When you pull the wheels out of the box, not only are they a beautiful carbon matte finish, but they also have a spare four carbon spokes in the box there for you just in case you break one of them. On the disc brake wheel set on the drive side, they're a two cross spoke with a straight pull or a radial spoke on the non-drive side. And then on the front wheel, there are two cross on the disc side and a radial on the right hand side there. The reason to have the two cross on the drive side in the rear there is obviously to have a bit more strength when you're putting plenty of power through the wheel set. Then the reason they have the two cross on the disc side on the front wheel is obviously because you've got the disc rotor there, there's quite a lot of force being put through that side of the hub. And then the last thing that the wheels come with is Luen Bidden, a bottle, so you can drink and look on brand. The only thing is it only came with one bottle. So if you're riding in summer and you need two bottles, you're gonna have mismatched bottles. Bit of a shame, small loss on that one, but also you're not paying for a Bidden, so it's kind of nice that it rocks up with a Bidden anyway. So the wheels that I got came with the matte black logos. As you can see, they've got that carbon weave there that makes the wheel set look futuristic. What is interesting with the look of this wheel set is I think that you could either love it or hate it. The reason you can love it is because it looks super unique. The reason you might hate it is because seeing that raw carbon weave is actually, it's a bit in your face. It stands out, which is cool, but some people might not like the aesthetic. And when I put the wheels on my new bike, which has a matte black frame, the kind of matte weave look of the carbon was a bit of a contrast with my frame. Whether or not you like that is up to you. I haven't actually decided which way I'm going, but it's just something to note. The carbon weave of those wheels is not there just for aesthetics though. It does actually serve a functional purpose. That functional purpose is to reinforce the wheels around the spoke nipples. As you can see, when you look closely at the wheels, the carbon weave is actually linked up to each of the spoke nipples and this distributes the load on the wheel all the way around the rim. I actually think it's really good marketing from Luen because the wheels are noticeable from a long way away. So to have a wheel set that stands out naturally without having to add any additional look to the wheels in terms of logos or paint or graphics or things like that. So a big plus one, not only for the engineering team, but also the marketing team for being able to have a wheel set that markets itself so easily as this. These rims are 19 millimeters internally. I've spoken about that with in a video in the past when I reviewed my new bike. You can see that video up here if you'd like to. 19 millimeters is actually a bit on the narrow side. I don't love it. And initially I ran these wheels with 28 millimeter tires. I'm gonna talk about more why tire choice is important with aerodynamics in a little bit. One thing I will say is that that internal width has actually been updated for the 2023 wheel set. So it's now 21 millimeters, which addresses that issue because that was a lot of the feedback that apparently Luen got with these wheels. Now, the next thing to talk about is the hubs. The hubs on these wheels are an aluminum hub. They have some ceramic bearings and they're actually completely designed and manufactured by Windspace. Because they have the spokes with that pattern and that style in terms of the carbon blade, they wanted to produce their own hub to go with the rims. And so they are completely bespoke engineered by Windspace and Luen. The hubs have 17 millimeter axles and they've got ceramic bearings in them, which as you guys would know, ceramic bearings roll really smooth. I don't have any measuring equipment here and I'm not scientific enough to give you a scientific rundown of how smooth those ceramic bearings are. But I can tell you when I spin the wheels in my hands, they're very, very nice and smooth. They spin for a long time. And I also think they will last for a long time. That's part of the joy of having ceramic bearings in any part of your bike is that that part will last a lot longer than regular bearings. It's got a beefed up flange on the drive side there. Some carbon spokes, which weigh 2.6 grams each. So a total of 55 grams of spokes per wheel. Oh uh, yeah, and while I'm out here, I'm just gonna interrupt and just do a little hub check. Very important to check the sound of that hub. Let's do it. Sounds pretty good to me. The total wheel set comes in, they claim at about 1,450 grams. So 1,450 grams for a wheel set is pretty competitive, even if they're slightly over or slightly under. It's very competitive for the price, I'm very impressed. Now, one of the things that I haven't mentioned yet is that the wheels also come in a 38 mil depth variant and a 68 mil depth variant. The reason that I asked for a 50 millimeter wheel set is the fact that I wanted a wheel to do all sorts of racing on, and Luen makes some pretty bold claims on their website with a graph there that they've apparently got from the Hambini test comparing them to various other brands and manufacturers. They seem to be the best on the market according to this graph, but I'm not gonna make any of those kinds of claims because I haven't done the test myself. But something interesting to see anyway, especially because Hambini is known to go pretty hard on bicycle manufacturing products and companies. Okay, so next thing is next, and this is the most important part of the video for me. That is how the wheels actually ride. So not only have I done a bunch of training on the wheels on both the flat and the mountains, I've also done a few races on the wheels, which I'm gonna speak about in a moment. I first installed them on my bike 
in August 2022, so last year, I had a 28 millimeter Vittoria Corsa control tire on there to begin with. Now with carbon wheels like this, tire choice is extremely important to get the best aerodynamics possible and running a 28 millimeter tire on a 19 millimeter internally widthed rim meant that I had a slight bulge to the tire and it didn't actually offer as much aerodynamics as possible. The first rides I did on the wheels were just around Girona, some really nice rides when I was on my older BMC. And then the first big ride that I did with the wheels was actually shortly after I installed them, which was when I packed my bike up and I rode from Girona up to Andorra. The ride from Girona to Andorra is 220 kilometers and it's got about three and a half thousand meters of climbing. So a fairly climby day. The deeper wheels were definitely noticeable when I was going up the climbs that day. The main reason a deeper wheel set will often feel heavier up climbs is because you're having to pick up the extra weight in the rim and push it down on the other side. So if you are going for a carbon wheel set, always having as lighter rims as possible is the best way to get the lightest feeling bike possible. But having said that, where you make up for it is on the descents. Having a slightly deeper rim and a slightly heavier wheel set is actually gonna give you more momentum downhill and it's easier to pick up speed and maintain a top speed for longer. For me as a light rider at 61 and a half kilos, this is really, really noticeable. So what was cool for me was that as soon as I was riding downhills, I could maintain my speed for a lot longer and I had to work a lot less to get myself down the hill at speed. The next thing that I did once I was in Andorra was I did a bunch of training with Ben O'Connor and Mike Woods just before they went off to the Vuelta last year. If you want to see a couple of episodes from that, have a look at this link up here. That training ride was actually done with these deep wheels on so you can see the fact that I was doing some very hilly days with the wheels and having not too many issues. Something that was nicely noticeable for me was the fact that when I was climbing, I did notice there was a lot of power transfer going through the wheels. That is due to the carbon spokes and the stiffness of the wheels and also the rim depth. By virtue of the fact that the wheels have a deeper rim than what I'm used to, it means that the spokes are shorter. Now that shorter spoke adds stiffness to the wheel and the power transfer from my legs into the drivetrain was more direct. This makes the bike go uphill faster. It makes it accelerate quicker. And that was a surprisingly noticeable factor in the feeling of the wheels when I had them on the bike and I was going uphill at pace. Prior to putting this wheel set on my bike, I had actually been running a 24 millimeter carbon set of climbing wheels that were much lighter, around 300 grams lighter. But what was interesting about saving that weight in the rim and having those slightly longer spokes is that the wheels felt like they had more flex. And when I put on the new wheels, the stiffness was very noticeable immediately. So that was a nice little performance upgrade. I wasn't quite expecting, but something that's a big benefit to these wheels. I think that when you're actually sprinting with a lot of load under the wheels, it will also make a difference as well. Jumping back a moment to the descending discussion I was just speaking about, when I was descending on the wheels in Andorra with Ben and also on the descents I've done since I've been riding the wheels, I have noticed that changing direction on the wheels at high speed takes a little bit more effort than on slightly shallower wheels. That's due to centrifugal force. When you are riding down a hill and the rim is spinning, it's holding you vertically. When you lean over, it requires a certain amount of force to get the wheels to tilt on an axis. The deeper the rim and the heavier the wheel, the more force is required to tip the wheel over to one side. Now, if you're going down a really twisty descent and you've got a left-hand switch back or a left-hand corner straight into a right-hand corner and you need to go from leaning one way to leaning the other way, the force that I felt the bike needed was definitely noticeably more than what I have experienced when I had the slightly shallower wheel set. I point this out because it's a factor in the way that the wheels ride, but it's not a factor that I think hugely affects the wheels in a negative way. And this is something you're gonna notice no matter what rim brand or wheel brand you go for and no matter what depth rim you get apart from the shallowest wheels. After I'd ridden the wheels in Andorra for that trip and done a bit more training on them, the first race I did on the wheels was the Catalan Hill Climb Champs at the end of August last year. The Catalan Hill Climb Champs is a mass start race that starts in a place called Ripoll and goes to the top of Voltaire 2000. Voltaire 2000 is a big climb in the Pyrenees Mountains. It's actually where Volta Catalunya is ending today on the day of filming. It's a very large climb and it's got some very steep gradients in it. So a place that you wouldn't normally think to ride a 50 millimeter deep carbon wheel set when you've got a slightly lighter option. But I wanted to put these wheels through the ringer on a big steep climb and see how they feel. Surprisingly, I ended the race pretty well. I ended up second in that race to my teammate who was off the front in a breakaway and he took the overall, what is 
quite nice about running a deeper wheel set in a race like this, even if you do end up at big climb, is the fact that you're saving a lot of weight on the flat before you reach the climb. When I was in the bunch and when I was out to the side and in the wind, I did notice that the wheels rolled more quickly through the air at speed. And so I saved quite a bit of energy there before crunch time came on the climb itself. If you're doing a pure hill climb that starts and just goes straight uphill like one of the UK national hill climb time trials, I wouldn't recommend these wheels, but then Luen have the 38 millimeter slightly shallower carbon wheel set for that kind of application, or you can go something slightly lighter again, like the wheels that I regularly run on my bike. So then moving forward a bunch of months, the next time I ran the wheels was at the start of this year in February when I did my first race for 2023. This was a three day stage race in the south of Spain and I fitted the wheels for this race with some new tires as well. The tires that I fitted were Pirelli P0 race TLR tires in 26 millimeters. So a slightly narrower tire. And this meant that the wheels actually had a better overall profile when paired with that tire. As I said before, because of the 19 millimeter internal rim width. Running a slightly narrower tire means that you get a better overall airflow coming past the tire and the rim and there's not as much of a disparity between the tire width and the rim width. These tires are also slightly faster rolling and slightly lighter so that is all going to play into the way that the wheel performs and I can tell you when I installed this tire the wheels felt much much more rapid than I had felt previously. Well to Guadalentin that I was racing was a three day stage race in the south of Spain. The three stages were a slightly hilly but kind of flattish stage on the first day, a more hilly but still not super super mountainous stage on the second day. And the third day was about 160 kilometers with some categorized climbs in it. On the first day, I sat in the bunch and I cruised along, I barely made any attacks. The second and the third days were actually what I want to speak about more and where I noticed this wheels. That is because this, on the second day, we rolled out and I got into a breakaway quite early on in the stage and then going up the first and the main categorized climb of the day. I attacked and went over the top of the climb and ended up staying off the front by myself for 60 kilometers after that. That attack that I put in up that first categorized climb was to get over the hardest climb of the entire stage race where there was basically a Chima copy or a prize for going over the highest point in the race. I wanted to be first over that, not only to get that prize, but to get the maximum mountain points that were on offer. And then afterwards, when I was solo for that 60 kilometers, I went over the next two categorized climbs first, which put me almost into the King of the Mountain jersey. The reason I mentioned riding solo and the reason I'm discussing it in this wheel review video is because I was riding extremely hard out there by myself in the wind the entire time. One thing I noticed after a winter of riding shallow wheels was that as soon as I had the deep wheels on, even with the same position, I was moving through the air far more rapidly. This is definitely a whole combination of things. Obviously my position, obviously the way I fueled, but also the wheels played into that. There's lots of marginal gains to be had from upgrading all of the things on your bike and a deep carbon wheel set is definitely a marginal gain that should be considered if you are racing. At the end of stage two, while I didn't win, I did finish one point off the King of the Mountains jersey. So my aim for day three and the aim for the team was to get the King of the Mountains jersey. On stage three, I attacked at about kilometer 20 into the race and I went solo for the next 20 or 30 kilometers before a group came across to me. When I did go solo at kilometer 20, it was before the first categorized climb. So I picked up maximum mountains points there. Then I kept it going over the second climb and picked up maximum mountains points there and got myself into the virtual KOM jersey. Again, I was noticing that the wheel set was really quick and on the climbs themselves, I wasn't noticing that the wheels were slowing me down due to the additional weight. One thing is that aerodynamics kicks in at around 20 kilometers an hour. So anything less than that and you wanna go on the lighter side, but anything faster than that and you wanna go on the more aerodynamic side, whether that be in the frame or in the wheel set. So for me, going over these climbs and averaging 30 kilometers an hour or so up the climbs, having the deeper wheel set made a difference there and I was able to get myself into that virtual KOM KOM jersey and then a group eventually came up across to me which we swapped off for the next 130 kilometers or so I was able to get all the maximum points over the KOM climbs and at the end of the stage race I was the overall winner of the King of the Mountains jersey thanks in part to the deeper wheels that I had on my bike and that ability to go solo for 60 kilometers the day before and another 20 or 30 kilometers on stage three as well so that was a nice little experience I had racing on these wheels and it's a good first person experience that I had that I can pass on to you guys as to how these wheels benefited me 
as a racing cyclist. Okay, now we're coming to the end of the video. I wanna do a few conclusions about these wheels, about who they're for and also who they are not for. Now for me as a general everyday rider, someone who rides every single day of the week, who trains really hard and also races, these are a perfect wheel set. And if you guys are out there and you're doing some training and some racing and you want a fast wheel set for a good amount of money, the Luen Hyper 50s are a very nice option. I wouldn't say they are the best option on the market. You can get lighter wheels out there. You can also get wheels that are gonna be stiffer as well. But for 1300 US dollars, they are a very, very competitively priced and competitive wheel set in terms of performance. I would recommend this wheel set to anyone who is racing and doesn't wanna spend top dollar on a wheel set, not only because you might crash them, but also because simply you might not have the means to do that. I'd also recommend them as a backup wheel set if you've already got a very nice and very expensive set of wheels and you wanna have a second set of wheels just in case you ever damage your rim and you need another set of wheels without blowing heaps of money on a really expensive set of wheels. This wheel set is for racing and aggressively performing cyclists in my mind, but who I don't think these wheels are for is for the general everyday cyclist who just rides socially with their mates. The reason for that is this. If you are riding with your mates and you're in traffic and traffic lights and things like that, all those micro accelerations that you're doing, you're going to be noticing the additional weight in the rims. And also, unless you are doing some really fast swapping off in the wind or something like that, you're never gonna need a 50 millimeter deep set of wheels. A 50 millimeter deep set of wheels is only going to get battered around in the wind. It's gonna mean that all the small accelerations you do when you're in the wheels, riding with your mates, or going up any steep little climbs, you're gonna to have to work a little bit harder for. And overall, you're just not going to be as fast as you would be if you get on a more general everyday set of wheels. I've spoken about going fast in the past. I've done an episode with Chad Hager about it that you can see up here. One of the things that Chad says in that video, and that is the basic physics of riding a bike, is that the faster you go, the harder it is to go faster. Now reducing drag off yourself and the bike is the best way to increase your speed and a deep wheel set is going to add to that. A shallow wheel has more aerodynamic drag so the faster you go the harder you have to work to get from say 50 kilometers an hour to 60 kilometers an hour whereas with a deeper wheel if you push hard at 50 kilometers an hour you're going to get to 60 kilometers an hour more easily. Having said that the inverse is also true. When you are going slower and you want to pick up a bit of speed with a deeper wheel set you have to work harder. You have to force additional watts through the drivetrain when you're say doing 10 kilometers an hour to get to 15 kilometers an hour versus having a shallower and therefore lighter wheel set you can push just a little bit and it's not as difficult to pick up that extra bit of speed if you are a general everyday cyclist and you're never doing anything at high speed you don't need a set of wheels like this for that i would recommend either the luen 38 millimeter wheels or something even shallower from a different brand and you can enjoy the benefits of being able to climb with a slightly lighter wheel set Alrighty, so that is my initial thoughts on the luen hyper 50 millimeter deep wheels very enjoyable wheel set to ride and race on for the last little while and I'm looking forward to doing a bunch more. If you guys have enjoyed this video and you do want to see more about bike upgrades that you can make, have a watch of this video right here. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet and you want to see more videos like this into the future, definitely give the channel a subscribe. I'll see you guys all in another episode very soon. All right, thanks guys. And there you go.